All right, this is your brother Aisha Yar coming at you with another lesson. First off, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone which I learned this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And shalom to the aqua that's listening and learning. So today's video is going to be various topics, man. There's various topics, you know. This 2023, this is the hopeful year that all the prophecies come to pass. And we're starting to see a lot of things happen right before our very eyes, man. All right. So at the end of the day, just like I did said in my video that I recently just did uh, in transit, I was saying the same thing. I was like, look, we got to tighten up. It's time to buckle down. And it's really time to uh, do what's right by you. How about show me how was shot? Because the Lord, the most side is making things happen, man. All right. They're making things happen. And the only thing that we can do is just look at everything unfold. And while everything is unfolded, we want to make sure that we're on the right side of our Lord, man. Make sure that we're on the right side of our power. Because things are getting ready to go down, man. Things are getting ready to go down. Every time we look up, man, there's always something else new that's in the air. All right? They're talking about shutting this place down, maybe, because they um, there's reports out there saying that another p word you already know what it is i don't want to say the word because they might give me a strike but another thing may happen when they may have to shut down you know society again and everything like that world war three is brewing very very heavy right now it's brewing very very hot okay um iran literally just got attacked with drones and they're already saying it's the israelis that went and did it Okay, the whole thing between Russia and Ukraine is going on, and America is getting themselves involved in that. All right, so at the end of the day, World War Three is brewing up very fast. All right, the MOTB is in the air. They're about to start doing trials on humans, I believe, in a, in a couple of months or in a few months. I think they said the second trial, because now they have a, a chip where they can put it inside of your brain, and it can get rid of depression and everything like that. And so this is going to be one of the ways that Esau deceive the world so they can take it man they're going to be like look th this can do this this can do that and then ultimately esau is going to make it to the point where people are just going to literally going to run to it because he's going to tell people he he don't necessarily have to tell people that they're, they're going to make it known that this is going to be the only way that you can pay for things and that's another thing man you other israelite groups out there speaking about or talking about that the motb is not the chip you got to get with it man you got to get with it Every time when it comes to the buying and selling part, this is where the majority of you groups fall short, man. When you say a sin, we'd be like, well, how can you sin by, uh, with, with buying and purchasing? How can sin buy and purchase something? It can't happen, man. It cannot happen. You got, you got to make shit make sense, but that's one of the things that they don't do, man. The only thing they look at is the word, uh, the M-A-R-K. That's all they look at, man. They don't look and read below that. Okay, so at the end of the day, it's time to get with it, man, because the Most High is getting ready to judge the earth. He's getting ready to judge the earth. Let's get a scripture real quick. We can start with Habakkuk, the second chapter. It says, uh, verse one, it says, I will stand upon my watch and send me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. The Most High's prophecies will surely come to pass, man. This is not a thing where the Most High said certain things was going to happen and then he was going to change his mind. The scriptures say he's not going to repent for the things that he uh, he's getting ready to do, man. Meaning he's not going to change his mind. The Most High is a man of his word. He is a man of his words. So at the end of the day, he's getting ready to make a lot of things happen. Let's read verse 3 one more time. It says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. We are definitely at the end. Who's in rulership right now? Esau, the so-called white man. Second Ezra 6 and 9 tells you who's the end of the world or who's the beginning of it that followeth. We are living in Esau's society. When you read Daniel the second chapter, the second chapter, and the seventh chapter, so forth and so on. It tells you who's going to be ruling at the end of the days, man. All right? That statue was very important to learn and to understand. We are literally living on the last legs, man. <laughs> the last legs, the toes. We are here, man. 
America and the EU, all of these places are getting ready to be destroyed. The Most High is getting ready to destroy this place, man. He's getting ready to take every single one of these crowns. Let's get that real fast. Real fast, man. Because I think I, I bring this up a lot. But, man, you know, this is how one of the ways you know that prophecy is happening, man. So this is uh, Daniel chapter 2. And we're going to go to... Let's see, the divine kingdom. Yeah, let's start at verse 44. And it says, And in the days of these kings shall the Most High, the power of heaven, set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. What kingdom is that? The kingdom of heaven. When Yahweh Shai comes back, he's going to take and consume all of these kingdoms, man. And all of these countries around the world, they're going to stop their businesses. They're going to stop their money flow. Their riches are going to be given to the Israelites. All right, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, everything is going to be given to you all. And it's going to start with the elect, man. Okay, let's read it one more time. Verse 44 it says, and in, the, in the days of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, which is the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, meaning this earth is not going to be left to heathen nations to rule ever again. These heathen nations will never rule on the earth ever again, man. All right, they had their time. The most I let these heathens rule on this earth for a very, very, very long time, man. All right, but now it's the Lord's turn. The Lord is getting ready to show the whole world how he's supposed to rule the earth. All right, because the Most High is not going to let his creation go to waste, man. He's not going to let his creation waste away. If, if Esau stays in rulership, the earth would be no more, man. There's too many reports out there saying that the earth probably can't even last, what, another 50 years? Or maybe shorter than that. They said uh, they said if the earth keeps going at the rate that it is at, it's going to decay. It's going to rot, man. Because pollution is at an all-time high. People are dirty. All right, all of the animals that's supposed to be used for cleaning the land, cleaning the seas, cleaning the air, they're being eaten. <laughs> all right, they're being eaten. They're not here to do their purpose. All right, Esau is literally not allowing the circle of life to do what it needs to do. He's putting everything out of whack. So this place has to go down, man. And this place is getting ready to go down, go down by thermonuclear destruction. All right. Keep reading, it says, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. And that's right, because the Lord is getting ready to come back with the angels. Once the Lord comes back with the angels, he's going to destroy this place along with other areas of the earth, man. All right? That's the end-all, be-all for everyone, man. For everyone. All right? Certain factories and businesses and stores and... uh. You know, the, the top elites, wherever they're hiding at and everything like that, everything comes to naught. Everything stops. Ain't going to be no more trading and, and uh, working with each other to make sure that the Israelites stay at the bottom and they get to do whatever they want. They get to hide the truth from people. No, nah, man, that shit going to be out of the window, man. That shit going to be gone. Once Yahweh Shai comes back, everything belongs to him because he is the first spirit created. He was the first spirit created, man. He's getting ready to take back what's his. Yahweh Shai is getting a bit ready to take back what's his, man. If people got a problem with it, hey, man, that's on you. Verse 45, it says, For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the, the great power hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and a dream is certain, and an interpretation thereof, sure. All right, sure. Just like we just read in Habakkuk in the second chapter. What does it say? Surely come. Sure, man. The Most High is a man of his word. He's not going to allow something to be spoken of, and then it never happens, man. Everything will surely come to pass, man. All right, let's get Romans uh, 13 and 10. I think we're going to start at... Uh, Uh, let's start at verse 8. It says, It says, Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, 
namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his uh, to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. To our best abilities, we're trying to follow the law. That's one of the ways that we show our faith. That's how you show some, that's how you show the most high that you believe in him when you start doing what he tells you to do. All right? Because this world tells you you can just be whatever you want to be. You can do whatever you want to do. And you'll still be saved. You're still making it to heaven. So forth and so on. But that's not what the scriptures say, man. The scriptures say otherwise. The scriptures say you got to follow the law. But we understand that we can't follow the law perfectly on this side. So what we do is we have faith. We follow the law to our best abilities. And then when Jacob's trouble be uh, begins, then we really have to kick in the faith, man. All right? That's what's going to get you out of here. But here's the point in verse uh, 11. It says, And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Our salvation is definitely nearer than when we believe, man. The chariot sightings are definitely overflowing the earth. They're starting to show themselves a whole lot more, man. Way more than usual, okay? Every time you look up, there's a new video of people looking in the sky recording the chariots, man. And they're like, look, it's a UFO. Look, it's a UFO. And people know about this, man. And we keep trying to tell them these are the angels, man. These are the chariots of the Lord. These are going to be the vehicles that save and destroy this place, man. Okay? And so at the end of the day, now it's time to wake out of sleep. This is what I keep saying. We got to tighten up, buckle down. It's time to really open up your eyes and your ears to what's going on in life. Because right now, things are happening at an all-time high. Things are getting ready to go down, man. People are becoming more more, more uh, lost in the world, more blind. So the more and more and the weaker and weaker they get and the more evil they become, that's the more and more we got to try to be right, man. Because we know what's going on. We know that this is the Lord making prophecy happen within the earth. Because the Most High told us to do what? He told us to be watchmen. He told us to be circumspect. Let me see if I can find that real quick. He told us to be circumspect, right? So then that way the, uh, the day of the Lord won't come as a thief in the night to us. All right? Uh, let me see. I think it's in probably in Exodus. Hold on one second. You already know how these apps be <laughs> when my uh my phone sometimes these uh these ads be popping up. But anyway, let's get um yeah Ephesians. Man, as soon as I click on. <laughs> As soon as I click on the scripture so I can read it and it go right back to another ad. Anyway, all right, this is Ephesians chapter 5. And we're going to start at, uh, we're going to get straight to the point. Verse 15, it says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. We're supposed to be circumspect, watching, looking at what's going on every single day, reporting the news, warning our people. Because that's what the Most High told us in Ezekiel, the third chapter. He said, warn my people of what's getting ready to happen. If you come into this truth and you have knowledge, all right, you have wisdom, you have understanding, it is now your duty to share this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding with your fellow people. So you can help wake up the elect, man, through the power of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, and the Holy Spirit, man. All right, that's the only way that you're going to be able to get up out of here, man, because if the elect does not hear this word, we stay here forever. We stay here forever, man. And that's insanity. That's something that we do not want to do. We want to get up out of here and go home. Okay? So let's read it one more time. It says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. You got to become a new man. You got to become a new woman. You got to put that old man and that old woman to the side, man, and never look back. Okay? Never look back. You're supposed to get to the point where you are literally reborn again. When you go outside, you wake up in the morning, your mind is different. You see things different. You hear things different. You start treating people better. Even the people, even two-thirds and, and heathens that you run into on a uh, daily basis, you start treating them on a uh, 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 better level, man. Because you understand why people act the way they act. You understand why Esau has the spirit upon him that he has. You understand why two-thirds act the way they act 
So you stop going to certain places. You stop seeing certain people. Or you speak to certain people a little bit more kind. Or whatever the case may be. All right? You're supposed to be reborn again. You're supposed to be in the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You're supposed to be walking um, in the footsteps of Yahweh Shai because he's the greatest ex example of how to be on earth. All right? So at the end of the day, this is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be wise, not as fools. There's a lot of Israelites that come into this truth and they still have a worldly mind, man. Being fools. Over here posing with guns still. Making you looking like a nigga from Chicago or New York or L.A., whatever the case may be. All right, here it is. You got shirts with fringes on it. <laughs> Holding up AK-47s and pistols and magnums. Whatever you got, man. Whatever it is you got. And Jake always got to make those ugly-ass gangster faces showing their teeth and shit like... <laughs> you know? Seeing, showing you that they still have demons on them, man. They still have demons on them because that's what it is with Jake, man. When they get them guns and everything and they pose, they got to look tough, man. They got to make sure they look angry so they can make it, make it feel like they're intimidating. Like, yeah, don't come around here with that shit, man. I wish a nigga would. That's what they have. They have that I wish a nigga would spirit on them, man. And they can't let that go. You're supposed to be reborn again. You're supposed to be in the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Yahweh Shai wasn't about carrying around weapons. And everything like that, man. It's like, look, you like put up your weapons. You're like, if we were in the kingdom, we would fight for my people. You you would fight. But right now ain't the time to fight, man. You got over here, you got certain Israelite groups that literally bring whole ass military weapons to camp, man. Where's the faith and trust in, our, in your Lord? Where's the trust and faith in your how about shooting your shot, man? And aren't you supposed to have faith to the point where you let them protect you in dangerous situations? Or get you out of it? Ain't that what Jacob's trouble is all about? <laughs> you know, because at the end of the day, it's like, if you can't trust in the Lord when you out there teaching, when can you trust him then, man? When? That's supposed to be the main time you trust in the Lord is when you go out and teach. What the scriptures say? You say, make your bodies a living sacrifice? Let's get that real quick. Let's go to the blue letter for that so I ain't got to worry about these ads. <laughs> Now, uh, this is Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And at the top it says, in the blue letter, it says, dedicated service. This is a dedicated service, meaning you're supposed to be thinking about this and willing to work, ready to work and serve Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai every day. When you dedicate it to something, this is what you think about and marinate in every single day, man. If you want to be a great basketball player, the first thing you do is you realize you got to make certain steps to become that greater basketball player, man. You get up early in the early in the morning so you can go to the gym, work on your jump shot. If you want to work on your dunk or your your layup, or whatever the case may be, you wake up early, you get to the gym, and you keep working at it over and over and over and over and over again until you master it. All right, and that's what we're supposed to be doing. The scriptures say, "Strive for the masteries." We're supposed to be striving for the masteries of this truth, man. Getting 100% truth out of these scriptures. All right? We're supposed to be masters, so then that way we can teach our people on a better level, man. Okay? So this is our dedicated service. We're supposed to be ready to do this, man. You're supposed to want to do this as well. If you don't want to do this, you got a problem. You got a problem. Let's read verse 1. This is Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. There it is again. You're supposed to present your bodies a living sacrifice. Why? Because we don't know if we're going to make it out or not, man. We don't know if the Most High is going to allow us to go out there and teach the truth but not make it home. Which is a living sacrifice. We go out there, we die in this truth, it is what it is, man. All right? We're still, you know, you're going to die. If you if that is your lot, you're still going to have your spot in the kingdom because you died while doing the work. But, of course, none of us want to go down that route. You never want to go down that route. None of us want to taste death. All right? Because a lot of us want to keep going. We want to go out there and teach week in and week out, man. We want to go out there and warn our people and do this work for the Lord, man. We don't want to go out there and have to always deal with quarrels, brawls, and all of these things, man. You know, but we understand this is part of it, but we don't want to go down that route to the point where we just can't do this anymore, man. You know, 
We want to keep going out there because what we just say, this is our dedicated service. We want to serve Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Okay, so we're supposed to go out there and make our bodies a living sacrifice. We're supposed to be going out there and having faith in our Lord to protect us, man. Don't the scriptures say there's more of the angels than it is of our enemies? Didn't the Most High say he was going to have the angels watch us and go round about us while we out there on the highways and the byways? And even when, I, even when you're not on the highways and the byways, we still pray to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai every single day when we walk outside. Even when you're not even outside, you could be in the house, man. <laughs> You could be in the house and then something happens where you forget to turn the, sto the, the stove off or one of your kids is doing something. You know, you just never know what, what's going on, man. So at the end of the day, we're supposed to be having faith within our Lord no matter what. And definitely when we out there teaching, you definitely supposed to have faith within the Lord then. All right? We, we ain't got time to be bringing no guns to camp, man. All right? What, what that, what's, what's that going to look like? You outside with all of these military weapons, and then Esau roll up, and he'd be like, why, why y'all out here standing like that? He can Esau could come up with some type of law and arrest your ass for doing that shit, man. You got to remember what kingdom you living in. We, you're not living in a, in a place where things are going to go your way. This is Esau's kingdom, man. He makes all the rules whenever he wants to make them. All right, he can come up with something on the fly. Lock your ass up because you want to go out there and pose as a threat, man. Even though you're supposed to be so-called out there protecting yourself. You Got to think wisely, man. Uh, verse 2, and it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. Okay? So you're not supposed to be conformed to this world. It says, Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to be reborn again. You're supposed to have a brand new spirit when you come into this truth. And like I said, you'll feel it. This is a thing where literally you'll just feel the um, change, man. You'll just start doing things on your own. All right? You'll start making decisions for you, for yourself on a better level. The most I will start revealing things to you just for the simple fact that you're trying to put in the work. Like, for instance, when I first got into the truth, right? You know, uh, I didn't learn certain things from the apostles or the brothers from watching videos. There were certain things that was just revealed to me just from reading. Because what the scriptures say, it says, blessed is the man that readeth in the book of Revelation. All right. Because I learned the uh, significance with, um, of course, you know, Yahweh Shah being the lamb and then uh, and the Passover. Yahweh Shah being the lamb and the Passover, why we eat lamb on the Passover, while we eat the bitter herbs and everything like that, all right? It, I was literally reading. It just hit me. I'm like, man, eat the bitter herbs so then we can feel that um, uh, that pain that we went through as a people. And then the whole thing with Yahweh Shai being back there in the Old Testament and, and, and what he represents now, you know, I was just like, damn, man, it's, this, this is deep, <laughs> you know? I started thinking about a lot of things. I started reading a lot more, and then a lot of things was just revealed to me. But that's not something that I brag or boast about or anything like that because I'm definitely not the best teacher, and I'm nowhere to the point where, you know, I'm just like, yeah, you know, I'm the shit or anything like that. But, you know, the, you know, how should I say it? Like, blessed is the man that read it. When you read, you know, you can start learning new things, man. You know, I remember uh, Apostle Tahari uh, said that in one of his old videos, he was like, it was certain things that uh, brothers was bringing out. We didn't even teach it to them. And the reason being is because they started understanding the scriptures, man. They got the milk. They understood the basics. And now the next thing you know, they were able to move forward and start really understanding the scriptures without somebody telling them, man, because now they have a, a greater understanding. And that's what we want, man. We want more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, all right? Hold on. Let me uh make a new clip. I ain't going to make the mistake like last time. Alright, like I said, I ain't gonna make the mistake like last time. I remember last time I was like, I didn't know what was going on and everything like that. I'm not gonna, you know, go down that route. But hold on one second. Alright, so yeah, we're gonna go right back to it. Let's read verse 2 one more time. It says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove 
what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. So this is what we do. We be transformed by the renewing of our mind and we do what's acceptable with the Most High, man. We start doing things that we know he's going to be pleased with. We're not going to do anything that's going to be out of pocket and put us and get us to the point where we're in a terrible position, man. All right? We're not going to go down that route. Because, like I said, we understand that great things are getting ready to happen on this earth, man. Yeah, yeah how about Shemmy Yahweh Shai is getting ready to shut down society. Judgment is getting ready to happen, man. Judgment is getting ready to happen. Let's get Joel chapter 3. Because, one, like I said, one of the main things that's going on right now that's brewing up very hot is World War III. Okay? And at the top it says, the nations will be judged. All right? So this is verse 1. It says, for behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So he's getting ready to get all of these nations and World War Three is going to happen in the Middle East. All right. World War Three is going to go down in the Middle East. And that's where everything is going to be uh, judged. That's where all, all the bloodshed is going to happen. All right. Ultimately, the missile is going to be shot over here. The missile is going to be shot on, in the land of Israel. All right. And, and missile is going to be shot at other areas of the earth, too. But the main battlefield is going to be over there in the Middle East, in the land of Jehoshaphat. All right. And it says in verse 3, it says, And they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for an harlot, and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. All right. And one of the reasons why the Mosai is making all of these nations come against each other right now is for what they did to the nation of Israel. Everything that they have done to you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right. They have put us in a very, very atrocious, hideous, horrific, horrible situation, man. When you look at everything that you got to go through on an everyday basis right now, we are literally on the bottom, man. On the bottom. And Esau is proud. Esau is proud. I literally just had my girl come home yesterday. And, um, you know, we DoorDash, all right? We DoorDash every now and then just to get extra money or whatever outside of our jobs. Because, you know, hey, you know, you got to have extra money, whatever. And, you know, um, she says, she says somebody came and sat at the restaurant to pick up an order or whatever. And everything like that. And all that she did was like, oh, yeah, yo, you, you here to pick up a DoorDash order? And he and Esau, Esau bitch ass going to say, oh, no, I have a career. <laughs> like, no, I have a career. Come on, man. Esau proud as hell, man. Esau is proud as hell. But the most time is getting ready to wipe that pride away. He's getting ready to wipe that pride away, man. Because Esau feels like he can't be touched. He feels like he can't be touched. Let's let's get that, man. <laughs> Esau got something coming for him, man. We're going to get uh, Isaiah chapter 14. And let's go to... Let's go to verse 12. This is Isaiah 14 and 12. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? Was did this weaken the nations? That's what Esau did. He did weaken the nations, man. He went and took over all of these lands. All right. He um ruled them. He's still ruling them right now. And America was supposed to be the number one country. And America was the number one country for a while. But now America is losing its power. America is losing its power. Now uh, other countries are looking to take that that spot, but it's not going to happen. We just read in Daniel, the second chapter, that Yahweh Shai is getting ready to come back and the Lord is getting ready to take everything. <clears throat> Salakia, that's his, man. Okay? So let's go to verse 13. It says, What thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend it in heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the Most High. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, congregation Salakia, in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. This is what Esau is thinking. This is what his mindset is like. He's like, man, I got so much power and riches and all of these different things. I'm going to be like the most high. You know, I'm going to bring out this chip. Everybody's going to bow down to me. I'm going to be able to see people's uh, thoughts. I'm going to be able to see people's feelings, know their every move. 
I got all the weapons and everything in the world, and nobody can't touch me, man. I could go outside of the earth and set up my satellites, do all these different things. Ain't nobody going to be able to bring me down. That's Esau, man. He has a lot of pride. He has a lot of pride. And, I, you know, I bring this up a lot, too, when that one video came out, and Esau was like, uh, um, they could make water out of thin air and everything like that. And it was like, yeah, you know, so if God wanted to say, oh, I'm getting ready to bring a drought upon the earth, Esau's like, oh, wish you wouldn't do that, God. <laughs> wish you wouldn't bring this drought. Because they know that they can make water out of thin air. Because it's like the scriptures say, uh, they were going to become wiser than Daniel. Esau literally has the wisdom, and he knows about the, um, uh, uh, oh, man, what's the word? Oh, man, I can't think of the word, Salakia. Salakia, he knows, ah, oh, I can't think of the word. But anyway, hold on one second. It's, it's going it's, it's to bother me. It's going to bother me. Hold on. Man, I can't think of the word. I can't uh, look it up either. Um. Anyway, anyway, whatever, whatever. I, I'll get back to it. It'll come to me. But anyway, he has the knowledge to come up with these different things and everything like that. And he feels like he can't be stopped. But at the end of the day, he will be stopped. Let's go back to it. Verse 14, it says, Isaiah 14 and 14, it says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with the sword that go down to the stones of the pit as the carcass trodden underfoot. This is what's getting ready to happen, man. This is what's getting ready to happen. This great nation known as the white people, <laughs> Esau, they're getting ready to be taken out of rulership, man. They're getting ready to look like the, the bottom feeders, the, the vile people that is speak that is uh, that is speaking of, spoken of, Salakia in the book of Job, the 30th chapter, man. All right. As I was thinking about that, too, when I walked in the store the other day, you know, it says Edomites everywhere, man. It says there's a lot of Edomite women. Now, of course, you know, Edomite men or whatever. And they were, you know, you just look at them, man. You know, you can tell they got all the money and the riches in the world, man. You know, because, you know, they look clean. <laughs> they look clean, man. You know, you look, you know, you look at the Edomite women's skin and shit. You know, look at their hair. Look at what they wearing, how they talk. And everything like that, you can you like, damn man, these motherfuckers rule the earth. They rule the earth, man. And then soon, you know, I go back to the crib, I go back in my neighborhood. You just look at Jake, complete opposite, dirty as hell, <laughs> walking around with whatever on, you know, loud like a motherfucker. You know, just no no uh sense of life, anything, man. Just out here, just living. It's just a complete opposite vibe, man. And it's wild. And we're supposed to be the chosen people of the most high. This is how you know that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is real, man. This is how you know that we are under the curses. Because like the scriptures say, we're the salt of the earth. Everything about this earth is great because of us, man. It's because of us. But so when you look at these heathen nations, especially Esau, you get pissed, man. You get pissed. You be like, man, these are the people that's ruling over me? The people that literally sip blood through a straw, put fucking ice cream sundaes in a toilet and sip ice cream sundaes out of a damn toilet. Over here eating bull testicles raw. Eating raw meat like it's nothing. What? <laughs> like what? Over here yelling, make make this demon ass music. You listen to the heavy metal music and shit. That's, that's some evil ass Esau shit, man. Making that damn music. Like, <laughs> that's them, man. These are motherfuckers that rule over us, man. Ain't motherfucking pedophiles. Look at look, uh, uh, Joe Biden. 
how we touch on them little girls, man. Being around them little girls. Them girls be looking uncomfortable in those pictures, man. These are people that we that's ruling over us right now. The most high got us good, man. <laughs> the most high got us good. All right. But the roles are getting ready to reverse. The roles are getting ready to reverse. Let's keep reading. Verse 19, it says, But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with the sword that go down to the stones of the pit, as the carcass trodden underfoot. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned or renowned. Verse 21, of course, this is a famous scripture right here. It says, Prepare and slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Yeah, no more you, no more of Edomites building businesses, building sky rises or high rises. All right, all of these tall buildings. No more of these stores like Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, McDonald's feeding us all of this poison. Kim trails all in the skies, all right? No more of this, man. No more of you possessing lands. No more of you owning anything, man. You're getting ready to serve hardcore slavery for everything that you have done to the nation of Israel, to this earth, to the animals, to your own people, to these heathen nations, to the Mosai himself, man. To the Mosai himself and his son. You literally turn and, 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 and whitewash all of the images, man. You made the Lord, you made you made God and his son look like some damn crackers, man. Y'all got the nerve, man. This place, the, the most side, like, it's, like it says in the scripture, he is not going to forget this, man. He's going to remember your iniquities. He's going to remember your iniquities. You know what? Let's, let's get it. Let's get it, man. He's going to remember these iniquities. This is Revelation chapter 18. We're just going to start at the top, man. Babylon is falling because that's what's getting ready to happen, right? That's what we're experiencing. That's what we're witnessing right before our very eyes. Babylon falling, which is America. Verse 1, it says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from the heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit, in the case of every unclean and hateful bird. It says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. All right? All of these nations have become drunk because of the way of life that America has presented to them, man. Here it is. You got TikTok when they're doing all these weak ass challenges. All right? Women over here getting fucking shirts, putting it over their heads. They don't have any bra on. They don't have no bra on. They putting these t-shirts over their head, putting sunglasses on their face while the t-shirt is over their head, and it is over here bouncing. So then they can make their titties shake, man. <laughs> and they doing it to a weak-ass, dumb-ass song. All right? Then, of course, they got other challenges where uh, women will literally lay in the bed, and they'll do this thing called the bunny ear challenge they put their feet behind their head but what they really trying to do is get you to look at their ass <laughs> man they become drunken uh, because of the ways of america man even of the women some of these women that's overseas are starting to become like the women that's over here in america foul dirty unworthy man and then another way you know that they uh drunk of the wine is because now you got all of these fast food places and all of these different foreign countries and a lot of people are getting becoming obese overweight having all kind of diseases and everything and body and health problems because they eating this poison man gobbling up this poison when you go to each country you got to make sure you know english that's the number one language you have to know you have to learn english so every country outside of america is literally looking on at america like yeah i love this life America has made sinning look great, man. America made evil look good. All right? That's exactly what happened, man. And that's another scripture. That's another scripture, but let me stick to the point because I'll be jumping around, you know. Stick to the point. 
But anyway, verse 3, once again, it says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. This is speaking about when the chariots show up. When the chariots show up, he's saying, Come out of her, my people, meaning getting, getting beamed up, and we're not going to be partaking in a, in a judgment that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is getting ready to bring upon America, all right? Because this is the part of the plays, America being destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. But we also use this scripture as well to say, come out of her, meaning come out of this world. Just like we read in Romans 12 and 2, be not conformed to this world. Come out of this world. It's time to finally live by the ways of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, all right? Now, here's what's, uh, the point I was speaking about earlier. Verse 5, it says, For her sins have reached into heaven, and the Most High hath remembered her iniquities. The Most High, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, has not forgotten the things that Esau have done, man. Never. They've reached into the heavens, all right? Esau has done so much wickedness. Our own people have done so much wickedness that the Most High is not going to forget this, man. He's going to remember all of these iniquities. And that's why he's getting ready to send those 200 million warheads over here, man. Anybody that don't want to get right speaking to you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and the um, Israelites that look like the heathen nations, because that is a thing as well. There's a lot of our people that look white. There's a lot of our people that look Chinese, Japanese, African, so forth and so on, man. All right? There's a lot of us that look like the heathen nations, but they're Israelites by blood. Because you got to remember, we were scattered through the four corners of the earth. And we were in captivity under all of these nations. So these, you know, so we, we all mingled with these other nations. So a lot of us came out looking like the other nations, man. We have the confusion of face. Okay, so it's a lot of us that look like the heathen nations. So speaking to you all too, if you all in the spirit run across these videos, not just mine, but all the truth videos, man. If you come across these videos, you understand this and it hits you in a way to the point where you want to acknowledge it, you're supposed to fear too, man. You're supposed to fear too. Because like I said, the most side is getting ready to bring judgment upon anybody that's not trying to get right, man. He's not going to hold back. He's not going to have any pity. He's not going to feel sorrowful when things start happening to these people, man. That's written in the book of Proverbs, the first chapter. He said he's going to mock when your fear comes, man. He's not going to feel sorry when you in pain and screaming and finally calling on his, on, on the true names. He's going to be like, oh, now you want to call upon me? When you in a troublesome situation? He'll be like, oh, I, knew you, I already knew you was going to do that, but guess what? I'm going to leave you there. He's going to turn his back on you. And this is the thing, man. He already had turned his back on us for so long. For so long, right? The Most High has literally left us alone for hundreds of years, man. Hundreds of years. And now here it is. He put the Spirit upon the apostles so they can understand this Bible, understand these scriptures. He put the Spirit upon them so then Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah can work through his men and they can warn us and, and wake us up, man. The Most High has officially... Um, uh, had he has he he doesn't have his back turned on towards uh toward us right now, man. He's literally given us a chance to hear this word. We literally have a chance to live a completely different and righteous life in the future. But a lot of you people do not want to acknowledge that, man. You would rather stay in captivity. You would rather be here and suffer. This is why two thirds gotta go, man. Because a lot of y'all love living filthy. Y'all love living filthy, man. But let's keep reading. Verse 6, it says, Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works, and the cup which she had filled, filled to her double. All right? So this is what's getting ready to happen to you Edomites. All right? Everything that you have done to us, you're going to receive it double. All the, all the messed up history that you, have, uh, that you have done to us is coming out, man. Y'all ripping out our teeth and wearing them. Feeding our babies to lions and alligators over here hanging us. And then you got your kids leaving school early. Like your kids leaving school early just so they can attend a lynching. <laughs> what kind of shit is that, man? 
Imagine you being at school right now, and then the teachers be like, yeah, I guess <laughs> we're about to leave school early so we can go watch somebody die. That's Esau for you, man. That's Esau for you. Yeah, and, and, they, and they always put school too. Yeah, it's supposed to be the place of learning. It's supposed to be a place where you can put, become a better person because you're getting the, the, the wisdom of whatever you're trying to learn. But back then, it was like, hey, man, you ain't got to worry, right, right, worry about that right now. A nigga about to die. Y'all want to leave school and go watch it? Kids be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go attend a lynching with smiles on their faces, man. Ten-year-olds. Esau grooming their kids to be evil, just like his ass, man. Over here, leaving school early so you go attend and watch a, watch a nigga die. You watch, the, watch him die. And not only do you watch him uh, suffer from being lynched, You'll probably watch them, uh, you probably lynch them and then light them on fire at the same time. And y'all just be sitting there, standing there, hearing the pain, hearing the agony that this man or woman is going through, hearing the screams. And y'all just smiling with that evil in y'all eyes, man, because y'all the damn devil. The devil, man, that this Bible speaks of, man. Y'all gotta go. Y'all got to go. And then after you kill him, you pose, you know, right when you feel like it's the right time to take a picture. You pose and then you make postcards out the shit, man. <laughs> Esau has a lot to pay for, man. Let's read it again. Verse 6, it says, Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she had filled, filled to her double, Okay. Verse 7, it says, How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she said to her heart, I sit a queen, and, and, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. This is what it was going to earlier, man. That pride of Esau. That pride of Esau. Feeling like he can't be touched. Feeling like he's on top. He can't be brought down. But the most is getting ready to take him down, man, because... Yeah, y'all got all the technology, y'all got the money, y'all got the wisdom, but you all do not have the power and the wisdom of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, though. Y'all got this worldly shit, man, that could run out. You could run out of your damn bullets. Yahweh Shai ain't gonna run out of his power. You can't stop power, man. True power, you can't stop that, man. Y'all can run out of your bullets. You can run out of gas from your planes or whatever the case may be, your jets. That shit can crash. That shit can break down. The chariots will not break down, man. You're dealing with something that is not nowhere near your level, man. Yeah, how about Shimmy Yahweh Shai is getting ready to take you all out of rulership? It's going to be the best thing that we have ever seen. And we can't wait. Verse 8, it says, Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine and and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord power who judgeth her. See? Strong is the Lord power, Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, who judges her. America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, man. What y'all gonna do? What y'all gonna do when the Lord return? You can't do nothing against power, man. You cannot do anything against power. So at the end of the day, this is what's getting ready to happen. Let's keep reading. It says, Lament for Babylon. It says, And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. That's right. World War III, man. America's going to be destroyed completely. Standing afar off with the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, America, for in one hour is thy judgment come. See? One hour. America's going to be destroyed within one hour. One. It took you all hundreds of years to build this place up. The Most High is going to take this place down in 60 minutes. That's true power right there. Once again, that's true power. What you going to do when that day comes, man? What you going to do when the Lord returns? Nothing at all, man. Nothing at all. Let's get that in 2nd Ezra 13. You know, before I begin, I'm going to start a new clip, too. But let me get this set up just in case an ad come on. And I was correct. 
You already know how it go. But yeah, let me start a new clip real quick. So this is 2nd Ezra's, chapter 13. And let's start at... You know, we just start at the top, man. 2nd Ezra, chapter 13, verse 1. It says, And it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea that moved all the ways thereof. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. That's right. When Yahweh Shai comes back with the angels, everybody's going to be afraid. Even you Edomites, man. Y'all going to be afraid. Y'all going to tremble. Because it's going to be a different experience, man. We already know y'all are y'all doing things behind the scenes right now to the point where you're literally... um gearing up for the lord because you all you know the elites and you the ones that's in power power they know the lord is getting ready to come back they know the lord is getting ready to come back so they're getting their soldiers or whoever the case may be to prep for this and everything and they feel like they're going to have a chance because that's the pride of esau that's the pride of esau but the thing is you're getting ready to go up against real power man when you actually see yahweh shy here in person when you see the chariots full-blown, you're not going to be thinking like that, man. You're going to be trembling, scared, in fear, like it just says right here. Verse 4, and says, And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth felleth when it filleth the fire. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to, to subdue the man that came out of the sea. So Esau's going to try. He's going to try to take down Yahweh Shai. It says, But I beheld, and lo, he hath graded himself a great mountain and flew upon it, the chariot, the fathership. All right? Like Apostle Ramlov and other apostles and the brothers say. You know, Esau likes to call the, ma the major UFO the mothership. No, man. Men rule this. Men are getting ready to rule the earth, man. The true father, the most high, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh. The fathership, man, all right? The great mountain, all right? Big, huge. Like it says right here, verse 7, it says, But I would, see, I would have seen the region or a place where out the hill was graven and could not. And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid and yet durst fight. That's right, they were afraid. These Edomites, these, so, these soldiers that's training, doing all this prepping, they're going to be afraid when they actually see Yahweh Shai and the angels, man. They're going to be afraid, but then they're going to they're going to fight anyway. Why? Because the Mosai is going to make sure and put the spirit upon them to fight back. He's going to have fun with these Edomites, man. He's going to have fun with these Edomites, man. Bringing them down. Bloodshed everywhere. Explosions everywhere. Yahweh Shai coming back with a vengeance. Verse 9, it says, And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war, but only saw that he sent out of his mouth as had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. Yahweh Shai, like I said, power, man. Power. He said he didn't hold, he didn't hold any sword, no instrument of war. He said he saw fire, blast of fire coming out of his mouth, man. Yahweh Shai is getting ready to use that spiritual power. And this is just a, a little snippet, man. You already know. You already know when Yahweh Shai comes back, it's going to be way more extreme than what we're reading, man. Way more extreme. It's not going to be a thing where Yahweh Shai is just going to come back and all this is going to be is just, he's just going to shoot out fire. This We're talking about the Lord, man. We over here see videos... Where brothers, you know, put together videos with this the, the hundred and forty four thousand flying and um the scriptures tell you about the laser eyes that uh the hundred and forty four thousand is getting ready to receive, right? Uh, uh shooting the fire out of the mouth, you know, so forth is running real fast, you know, all of that, man. That's for the hundred and forty four thousand. What kind of power do you think Yahweh Shah is gonna have, man? 
This is the power that the Most High Himself is going to give His His Son. We're getting ready to see some very, very great things, man. Because you got to remember, this salvation is going to top the salvation from um, Egypt. It's going to top the first time around, man. This is not going to be a thing where it's, 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 it's going to be on the same level. No, we're getting ready to see and live in a time like never before. Just like it says in Jeremiah chapter 30, right? This is, this is going to be a time that none is going to be like it. Jacob's trouble is going to be like something definitely is going to be like, damn, man. Literally, we were, I remember sitting down, doing these lessons, going out to the streets, doing the lessons, uploading the videos or whatever your everyday life is like. You know, all the brothers do the same thing. Sisters, you know, watching the videos or in our free time, you know, we watching a game or going out to a restaurant or whatever the case may be. Gonna be thinking in the back of your mind like man i remember these days like it was yesterday now look at life i'm literally over here running for my life getting into situation after situation seeing death fall beside me man i said <laughs> it's gonna be something else man so you really gotta think of the power that the most sides getting ready to showcase when these things happen man because we're gonna need that standard and that ultimate standard, of course, is going to be Yahweh Shai. Let's um go to verse eleven. It says, "And all and it says, and they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and a great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight, and burned them up every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multiple no uh, multitude Salakia, nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke." When I saw this, I was afraid. Yeah, Ezra's was seeing some. Ezra's was seeing a lot, man. He was seeing a lot. He was seeing the downfall of this place. He was seeing the return of our Lord. He was seeing the death that was brought upon this earth. He saw what the famine looked like. He saw what martial law looked like. He saw it all, man. He saw it all. He said he was afraid. He wasn't even living in this time yet. <laughs> But Ezra's understood that he was going to have to come back and relive this, man. Well, not relive it, but, you know, he was going to kind of have to come back and live, man, and live throughout this time. So now that we know that these things are getting ready to go down, that's like we always say, what manner of persons are we to be, man? What manner of persons are we to be knowing that we're about to live in the most craziest time in human history? We about to live in a time of our Lord returning, man. It's time to buckle up. It's time to get right. All right, let's get uh, let's get that real quick. We gonna get um. Hold on one second, cause we gotta fight for everything that we have learned. We gotta fight for that salvation, man. We gotta fight for that salvation. It's just Revelation chapter three. And uh, let's see. Let's start at 10. It says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast what thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my power, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my power, and the name of the city of my power, which is New Jerusalem, was coming down out of heaven from my power, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the, unto the churches. All right? So hold fast to what you have that no man takes your crown. All right? We're supposed to hold fast to this wisdom. Like it says in Isaiah 33 and 6, Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of thy time. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. We're supposed to hold fast to this, man. This is where real, real faith is going to kick in. When times get superbly rough, we're going to have to have great faith, man. Great faith. Because, like I said, there's going to be a lot of times where you we're going to be out here in these streets. We're going to be out wherever we at, living as pilgrims on the earth. All right? You know what? It's a lot of uh, it's a lot in that scripture, too. Because we're going to be as pilgrims on the earth, man. It's going to be a lot... That's going to go down, man. We're going to see a lot of things. 
Let's go to second. There's a 16. And we're going to start at verse 35. It says, Hear now these things and understand them, ye servants of the Lord. Hear now and understand them. Don't just hear it and have it go out the other ear. Hear what the Most High is saying unto us and take it in, man. Understand what he's getting ready to say unto us. It says, Behold, the word of the Lord receive it. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. There it is again. The plagues draw nigh and they are not slack. Like Apostle Tahar said, the Most High is not dragging his feet. He is not dragging his feet. He's having things happen at the right time, at the correct time. All right? These plagues are coming closer and closer toward us, man. And we getting ready to see it. Verse 38, it says, As when a woman with child in a ninth month bringeth forth her son, with two or three hours of her birth, great pains come past her womb, which pains, when a child coming forth, they slack not a moment. That's right. When it's time for that great deliverance, the, the, the lady, the woman, she has to bring that, that child forth, man. That child has to be born. The woman can't hold that child in. Once it's that time, the, the, the woman has to release that child, man, so that that child can live. That's exactly what's getting ready to happen with the elect of Israel within these last days. All right? The Most High is not slack concerning his promise. These things have to happen. The new life has to happen. Just like the newborn baby, we're getting ready to be new people with the law written in our inward parts. And we're getting ready to experience life. New life. All right, so all of these things is getting ready to happen. We have to experience it. We have to experience the evil in order to appreciate the good. You know, we got to we had to go through captivity. We had to go through everything that we have been through and on in order for us to really appreciate and love the kingdom. The most I didn't want us to be people with that was born with silver spoons, man. That's how you become prideful. That's how you, you get out of line, get out of character, start to boast and brag and everything like that, man. When the elect make it, they're going to appreciate where they at, man. They're going to realize first, they're going to realize they're on the chariot first and foremost. And like I always say, if I make it, I'm bawling, I'm crying, I'm, man, I'm praising the Lord superbly loud, man, you know. And I'm pretty sure a lot of other people are going to feel the same way. So when we get in that chariot, that's going to be the first step. And then when we actually... You know, land in the wilderness, and we just see, you know, Yahweh Shai guide us and give give out the orders, and we actually get get the chance to see the kingdom being built up from the ground up. We're gonna appreciate everything that we're gonna see and receive from that from then um, from then on out, man. Because we're gonna remember the hell that we had to go through before we got to that side. So this is why it's a good thing to humble yourself now. And appreciate that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai has brought you into this truth, man. Appreciate your calling, man. Be grateful. Be thankful. But getting back to this, all right, like it says, when the child coming forth, they, they slack not a moment. These plagues are not going to slack not a moment. Once Jacob's trouble begins, it's going to be boom, 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 boom. Like Yahweh Shai said, he saw Satan fall as lightning. Things are going to be happening quick. It's going to be happening everywhere, man. It's all out hell, man. All out hell. Verse 39, it says, Even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn, and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. On every side, man. The whole earth is getting ready to feel the wrath of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. This is why we say there's no reason for people to really move or try to get away because, you know, you got certain uh, heathen nations, you know, they, like the scriptures say, the heathen nations... They're getting ready to flee into their own lands because they realize that America is going to be destroyed. All right. You got a lot of our people that want to get out of America, too. But the thing is, this is going to be a thing where the whole earth is getting ready to feel the wrath and judgment of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. Because all, the whole world is wicked. The whole world is wicked, man. Especially, you know, these countries outside of America, America because these other countries are mostly heathen nations. Of course, you got uh, South America, where the majority of the northern kingdom, they're down there, but they're wicked, too. They wicked, too, man. They not going to get away from the judgment of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. They got to receive the plagues as well, man. 
So at the, like I said, so at the end of the day, the whole earth is about to fill it, man. That's why it says Yahweh Shai is getting ready to take over the earth. The, he's getting ready to bring down all the kingdoms. Verse 40 it says, Oh, my people, hear my word. Make you ready to thy battle. And in those evils, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. All right? Be ready for the battle, man. Be ready for these plays that's getting ready to happen on this earth. Because the battle is going to be the faith. Like I said, we're going, to have to, we're going to have to experience not eating, not drinking, not knowing where our next shelter is going to come from. Not knowing if we're going to make it or not. You know? Because, man, once, once you make that decision to not take the MOTB, that's when you literally, you chose your how about shimmy out shy. And that's a good thing, man. That's a great thing. But that comes with a price, so to speak. <laughs> you know? Because you got to let everything go now. Everything that was in this world, you got to let go. And that's what this, we've been reading now all day. We've been reading. Hey, don't be conformed to this world. Come out of her, my people. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Right? So we got to let go of this world, literally. And we're supposed to be as what? Pilgrims on the earth. Be even as pilgrims upon the earth. We're going to be moving and walking from city to city, from area to area. Because that's the only way you're going to survive. Because we understand that Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, he said his service was going to eat, his service was going to drink, his service was going to rejoice. In, in reality, in order for you to experience that, you can't stay stay in the same area <laughs> and just wait for food to come. Like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Any one of these days, I'm going to see some manna fall from the sky. <laughs> no, nah, man. And most I want to see if you literally have faith in him, man. You can, he's going to make sure you go through certain situations, man. He's going to make sure you go through things, man, to see if you really believe in him. Then, of course, it's not smart because why would you stay in the same place anyway, man? It's going to be martial law in the streets. You're going to be trying to get away from people as much as possible. You, won't have, you don't want to deal with nobody in that time, man, at all. So this is what we're going to be like. We're going to be as pilgrims on the earth. It says, he that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away. And he that buyeth, as one that will lose. He that occupieth merchandise, as... Uh, so like it. He that occupieth merchandise, as he that hath no profit by it. And he that buildeth, as he that shall not dwell therein. He that soweth, as if he should not reap. So also he that planteth the vineyard, as he that shall not gather the grapes. They that marry, as they that shall not get no, get no children. And they that marry not as the widowers, and therefore they that labor, labor in vain. For strangers shall reap their fruits and spoil their goods, overthrow their houses, and take their children captives. For in captivity and famine shall they get children. And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery, the more they deck their cities, their houses, their possessions, and their own persons, the more will I be angry with them for their sin, saith the Lord. All right? The most sides getting is angry with the wicked every day, like the scriptures say. And like I said, when you read that, of course, the wicked is Esau, all right? The wicked is Esau, but our people are wicked as well, man. Superbly wicked. Our people, a lot of our people have become more wicked than the wicked, <laughs> okay? So this is what's getting ready to happen. The most High is getting ready to bring these plays that they will not slack. They will not slack, man. So we got to be, like I said, get you ready for the battle. Prepare your spirit for what's getting ready to happen, man. Prepare your spirit. I believe uh, the brother uh, Amawan Gabar, I believe that's the brother's name. He just literally came out with a video saying the same thing. The most high is preparing our mind for what's getting ready to happen in the future. Because like I said, the more and more we, and every single day that we wake up, every single day that we wake up, we always think about Jacob's trouble. Because any one of these days, we can wake up and literally look at our phones or just realize life is happening and be like, oh, shit, this is it. This is it. And when that day comes, guess what? This is going to happen. This is what it's going to be. It ain't going to be no more uh, going out there and doing the word, man. I mean, doing, <laughs> doing the word, doing the work. It ain't going to be no more of that, man. That's why we try to tell you people right now, receive this while you still can. So let's get, um, I already know it's in uh, Amos. Let me wait for this to go off. 
All right, this is Amos. Let's see. Let's start at nine. And it says, and it shall come to pass in that day. Uh, this is Amos chapter 8, verse 9. So like you. And it said, it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord power, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. And I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins, and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the morning of an only son, and the end thereof as a bitter day. And that's what's getting ready to happen, because like the scriptures say, the day of the Lord is darkness and not light, right? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. That's what the day of the Lord is getting ready to be. It's getting ready to be a time where he's getting ready to bring a lot of evil on the earth, which is death, man. He's getting ready to bring all of these plagues, just like we just read about. Verse 11, it says, Behold, the days come, said the Lord power, and I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. This is what's getting ready to happen. This is where a lot of people are going to be seeking for the prophets, seeking for the different brothers that was bringing out this truth. They're going to be like, man, they were telling, telling us that this was going to happen and that was going to happen. And now it's actually happening. We need to look for them so we can find out what we're supposed to do. This is when Jake is finally going to get a mind, man. <laughs> this is when Jake is finally going to be like, I need to take this seriously. Because that's how Jake is, man. They don't believe anything until they actually see it. See, that's what faith is, man. With faith, man, you believe in something before you, before you see it, you know? That's why I've spoken about in uh, Hebrews 11 and 1, I believe. You know, faith is the substance of things not seen or the evidence of things not seen. We believe in something that we never even fathomed it. We never even thought about seeing it yet, man. We believe in Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. We've never seen them before. We believe in Jacob's trouble, and we believe that that's getting ready to happen. And we believe that World War III is getting ready to happen. All of these things, right? We believe in all of these things. We've never seen any of these up close. See, when Jake actually see World War III going full-blown and they see certain things are happening where certain cities are probably getting shot at or whatever the case may be, they see martial law on the streets and all of that, that's when they're going to be like, okay, yeah, this is real. Kind of like that same spirit that people had when... um. Everybody thought the world was going to end multiple times. Everybody thought the world was going to end in the year 2000. It never happened, right? Then people thought people uh, the world was going to end in 2012. That never happened. Then people thought it was going to end in 2021 because they was like, yeah, they just had the, the, the numbers switched around from 2012. So it's going to end in 2021. And now people still here. But see, people did have a little bit of sense, like I said, in 2020 when they saw things going down. They're like, oh, man. It's happening, you know, these, these, those things that the, those those dudes on the corner were speaking about, yeah, it, it's finally happening right before our face. But as soon as Esau let up, then that's when they was like, oh, um, whatever, this place is going to last forever. This place is going to last forever. But what does the scripture say about that? What does the scripture say about that, man? Let's get it. This is First Thessalonians chapter 5. And let's start the, uh, the first verse. It says, Well, of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction coming upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. All right, so this is what's happening. Esau promised you all peace and safety. They told you this whole Thing, this whole sickness that was out here was going to go away as long as you took the magical waters, right? They told you that, you know, you can start going back to the gyms. You can start going back to the bars. You go out to the club, the baseball, football games. You can travel again. You can have your gatherings. You can do all of these things. You can live your life, be successful, do whatever you want to do in life. Everything is good. You ain't got to worry about shit, right? Peace and safety. But now what's happening? Sudden destruction is coming, man. Sudden destruction is coming. We all saw it today. Attacks were made on Iran. That's a major thing, man. That's a major thing. Now we're just waiting to see what's going to happen because of this. And we're going to wait to see what happened outside of this as well. What other prophecies that we know is getting ready to pop off, man. Verse 4, though. But it says, But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day shall overtake you as a thief. 
That's right, because we're watching. We're being circumspect, like we read earlier. We're redeeming the times because, because we know the days are evil. We're looking out for everything that's getting ready to go on and go down, man. We're not out here, you know, with our eyes closed and not paying attention. We're not plugged into the matrix no more, man. We're getting ready, man. We're getting ready for the battle, man. We're ready for our Lord to return. We're ready to go home. All right? Verse 6, it says, uh, no, verse 5, it says, You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. But here it is again. But let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate, the breastplate of what? Of faith and love. And for a helmet, the hope of salvation. All right? So this is what we're supposed to be doing, man. Keeping the faith. Having our hope in you. How about Shemmy How Shai? Doing what's right by them and preparing ourselves for the greatest, most exciting, but most horrific time that the Lord is getting ready to bring upon the earth, man. Get ready, man. Because it's getting ready to go down. This is the 20, this is 2023, the hopeful year that all prophecies come to pass. And Lord willing, Yahweh Ratzazah, it is. So I hope this is edifying, man. So with that, I'm going to say, call Halayim, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And shalom to the aqua that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Rats is out. I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharala. Keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.